Hello one for the cold BB, I would say about mid-budget build. So I wasn't originally going to make a build guide about this build, but I'm just going to make it just in case anyone does want it. For the build I play to farm the Legion slash Ritual for like a week or so. So I'm just pointing this out there just for that reason. You know, if you're looking for a, um, a very high-end version that can clear all content of the game, the ver current version I have cannot. This is pretty much only designed for mapping. It is budget because I don't even have a second cluster jewel even set up in this build yet. I have like, this is in the wrong section. Inspire Learnings is in the wrong section. That's supposed to be Inspire Learnings. And like all the stuff's in the wrong location. Like one cluster jewel set up only. Uh, like a lot of upgrades on the actual gear need to be done. If I can find the right buttons. There we go. So it's definitely not, I'd say it's more, it's probably like a mid-budget version, low to mid for a BB build. Anyone knows BB builds, know that they cost a lot of currency to get to super high tier. So I'm just putting this out there as like a low budget version if people want to play it. But there's going to be no um, showcase of the build. It's pretty much, because if you want to see a showcase, just go to my previous video with the Legion Ritual Project. Where I showed it in there, the build it off, but it's pretty simple. Right click, get your 10 stacks, and run into enemies, and they blow up. That's literally the whole entire build. You know, your left click gives you this. Left click gives you vortex. You know, on bosses, I throw a frost bomb out there to give a curse on them. And I have a status mark for like the big bosses. But, and the flame dash. Like, that's literally the whole entire build. All the flasks are animated to go off on their own, except for the life flask, which you just use if you needed. But it's a very simple playstyle, and I'm gonna make this very quick, um, very quick. But it's pretty much a double void battery setup to get your ten power charges. You know, one void battery has a molten shell and cast damage taken setup. You don't need anonymous; it's just for my last build, and if with a flame dash in there for movement. The other one is just a cast on death portal setup because you do all die a lot with this build, with a herald of purity. The, um, if you want, you could probably drop a, where are you at? Is this one? Yeah, you can probably drop the Assassin's Mark on this build and throw in another Purity if you want for more damage. Like Purity of Fire, just to increase your damage by more. Uh, pretty much the Helmet, um, Hubris Circuit or Blizzard Crown work for Blade Vortex Duration. But pretty much all you're trying to do with this is you want to slam a plus one power charge with a nearby enemies have a 9% or even 12 if you really want to cold res. Slam them together, hope you don't brick it, and then keep what you got. That's literally what I did with this helmet. It's very budget, um, budget version. It's not even like that, it's oh, it's not the worst because they, they get the uh, increased mana reservation efficiency, which is really nice. You know, be able to craft the light. I got a resistant roll. So the helmet did come out pretty well, but it's pretty much just a gamble. Throw two, throw a prefix suffix together and hope you get something good. And it's pretty much a Vortex, Arcane Surge, Unbound Element, and a Bone Chill setup for your left click. Uh, necklace, pretty much use a Necklace. This is my big stat filler with Charisma, but it's pretty much a plus one all fist skill gems with a massive amount of resistance. Pretty much, this is this there to fix all my resistant problem, or not my resistance, my attribute problem. Because you're gonna notice with this build, attributes absolutely suck getting, especially dex and strength. So that's what this um, whole point of the amulet is just to fix that. Uh, the rings, so I would probably recommend getting one with a curse enemies with frostbite on hit ring and just craft anything you need. I like, at the time I just needed resistance and life and strength, so that's why I did with this one. Just threw a bunch of fossils and something came out. This one is just there as a placeholder until like a power charge, plus one power charge ring would be a lot better than this one. It's just a placeholder with at least something because I had an open ring slot and I didn't need anything. But it's pretty much just a buff effect with more damage. Uh, chest piece, this chest piece is absolute garbage. This is what happened when I slammed a, um, a sacred garb, you know, six linked with a explode T1 with an increased effect of non curse auras T1 and I got probably the worst outcome you can get. You know a T10 life and a T8 resistance. 
So luckily I can craft another suffix or prefix on this. Like I might just throw an exalted orb on this um, chest piece to see if I get a resistant mod for fun. But overall the chest piece sucks. It's definitely something that is a very, very budget just because it's only there just for explode and increase effect. Other than that, chest piece sucks. Uh, the boots, these boots I was able to get for 24 divines. Normal leagues, I would divine this my, I would craft these myself. This league, I'm not going to craft them with the changes to harvest. But you don't need boots like this. I ran, you know, like for like three, four days without boots, without these boots. And I was used to using um, movement speed and onslaught boots pretty much with life resistance. And it worked without a problem. I just wanted to upgrade to these boots because I just wanted the, um, you know, the onslaught tailwind lucid boots just for fun. And then, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot my gems in the six lane setup. It's inspiration, power charge on crit, hypothermia, increased crit damage, awaken uh, on the leash, and uh, bow BB. Uh, boots is pretty much a curse setup. Elemental weakness, hex touch, and frost bomb. And then the random assassin mark, which you don't need. Because I at first didn't realize that hex touch doesn't work with assassin mark. So I sort of bought this without realizing that. And I was like, screw it, I already have it, I'll just leave it on there. Uh, Stygian's Vice. This is a, another stat fixer. This is from my last build, but it's pretty much just life, resistance, stats, get what you need. And it's, you know, upgrade to a headhunter or mage blood later on. The uh, Abyssal Jewel, it's really just cold damage, global crit, and life. You know, get whatever you need. Uh, gloves. It's pretty much in light and level 3. You can go 4 if you really want to. If you're going to throw in a Herald of Ash in this build, I probably recommend going for level 4 just to get a little bit more mana. But it's pretty much your Hatred, your Herald of Ice, and your Determination setup. So, these gloves were an absolute pain in the ass to craft. They are required for this build though. If you don't have these gloves, they released the, um, the Cold Conversion Unique Gloves that got revamped this league now give you 100% fizz is cold. You can definitely use that as a placeholder until you get gloves like this. And then once you get gloves like this, you can actually get your 100% uh, converting fizz to cold. And the gloves, like these are much better than the, those basic gloves. It's just crafting these is one of the worst things ever. So what I would, what I did with these ones, this is probably the best way of doing it, is buy ones with suffixes that you want. So like for me, I was looking for these pair of gloves with the um, temple mod. Increase damage against chilled enemies. I was looking pretty much for that with a one resistant roll that was pretty decent. Just to have a double res roll just to help resistance in this build. And then what I just did is um, I pretty much just used the Eldridge uh, Chaos Orbs and stuff until I got like something that was workable. What I originally did with this, so I was trying to go for, was a um, Suffices Cannot Be Changed, a Veil Chaos Orb on it. I was trying to get the... Um, the fizz converted as cold damage as the um as the unveil but sadly i didn't get it but i got, i did get a t2 life on it was the reason i did not change the um the gloves and then i just crafted the fizz converted as cold and then exalted slam the shitty um evasion es percentage which is not good but it works so the biggest problem with those gloves is you do have to get if you don't have the unveil you have to get the um, Edo World's uh, perfect modifier, the T6, of getting the 35% fizz is extra cold, uh, com fizz damage converted to cold. You do need that if you want to play with these gloves. If you don't, if you're stuck with just a regular basic craft, because the gloves give you 35 up there, 40, 50 gives you 60%, and your last 40% comes from. The cold master right here giving you the 40 percent more fizz is cold if you have the basic gloves you can put the cold exposure instead but like this is what gives you the 100 percent is the gloves plus the mastery and then flask is pretty much just a um a corrupted blood flask taste of hate bottle of faith um an armor flask and a movement speed flask that's pretty much the basic of that uh skill tree you know, it's your generic call build. You know, Malediction, Void Beacon, Fridge Wake, and Forbidden Power. If you're doing this as a um, your first time leveling a witch, I'd probably say go uh, Lab 1, 
lab two. I mean, from here it depends you what you have wise between three and four. Just do whatever you think's best for you. And in skill tree, it's pretty basic. You know, crit. You're skimming a lot of crit. Crit, stats, life, more life, power charge uh, with the increased damage, power charge, you know, a random uh, crit strike, uh, life, crit strike again. Your double her um, herald effect. If you want to go into a leap, you can just take these two points and like the block and mana regen and stuff, but it's up to you. But this just gives you more... Um, more damage, more mana reservation for Herald, so it's nice to have. Yeah, your cold damage cluster up here. Second cluster if you had it. Mana reservation cluster. Your um, life ES, you know, the crit wheel. More crit against uniques. And like down here, so this, I took this mainly, well, you take the power charge for sure, but like the chaos resets, the max mana, and then the life on kill. This is all because it's where my Spire Learnings was. So I had to take the 1, 2, 3, 4 to activate Spire Learnings. Other side is pretty much a Cluster Jewel. So the basic one I'm using right now is just a Battle Hardened Force Multiplier and Iron Breaker. Just to get the uh, more damage. More damage. And then the Double Mediums. They're a Towering Threat Vast Power on both of them. Because that's what gives you more AoE, more damage per power charge, both of them. And then it's pretty much, I have one Watcher's Eye with just um, crit strikes while affected by uh, hatred. And the other one is another um, life, crit multi, crit multi. That's all they are, pretty much. Down here, you know, another cluster for um, crit, life, mana reservation, armor more um increase effect of nine with more life and then right power charge and then right here i have a uh, malicious fate uh, jewel in here i don't know what the best combination is this one is just a elemental res with mana cost just for lowering the mana cost a little bit so and make sure if you get this you need um you need high templar um dominus because you need the inner convention which gives you more damage and then you gain power charge instead of frenzy, which doesn't matter too much, but it's more for 3% damage per power charge. And then put this wherever you can. The best location is right here because you need it though when you put it on here not to convert these points. Because that's what happened when I put this over here. As you can see, it converts, you know, all the inner it converts all the ones that you would take normally. So it's a bad it's a bad location for it. So that's why it's down here because it doesn't convert these big ones at all. It just gives devo devo uh, devotion, which is what you want. If you can put that one in this spot, you know, you just take Doomsday and you're done. Super easy. Leave everything how it is. You know, life is easier because then you would just respect this. You can even respect the bottom part down here if you really want to. These points if you want to or just keep it the way it is. You can even throw Intuitive Leap over here instead. And just take one, two, three, and four. Because you take these three points usually anyway. You just take the ran one random uh, endurance charge. Which would cut you down here. You can just cut off this whole part, bottom part, the chaos res, the man on kill, if you really wanted to. But the man on kill is nice. I think that's it for the budget version of this build. Trying to miss anything else? I don't think so. But yeah, like it's a budget version. It's not the end game version which you would want to aim for. If you're gonna upgrade this build, you know, like I said, fix the the timeless jewel, get the head on to our mage blood, get a second cluster jewel set up. Cause like what my mage blood, what my head on to now, I'm gonna drop most likely this whole bottom part down here, all these points, and just put in another cluster jewel set up. And if I need to cut more points off, I can always cut the extra life wheel point there. Um, trying to think what else. Like the build can definitely scale. Like some people are going down here to get the um, AOE with the uh, plus one seal. People like don't even go down this way at all. Like this is based on what you prefer. You know, if power charge ring, 
There's a lot of upgrades to the build that can be done. I'm most likely not going to make the update upgrades though because I'm pretty much at the point where I just want to farm up a, a power charge on ring and then dump the build. Because I got what I was mainly after. It was a headhunter. So I want to start using it. But just want a quick video about the bait budget version I would call this. This is not mid-max. It's not expensive. The, the long as you can get, I would say, the gloves, the build from that point is easy to get. You know, like you can easily self-craft the, the hubris circuit. This one, you can self-craft. The only thing I tell you is the explode mod is such a nightmare to get. It's super low rating. It's like four divines if you want to buy it already, which is probably the best option. Just saves you a hassle. And just craft the um, increase effect on it. this one already. Put them together, get what you get, move on. You know, like I said, boots, you don't need stuff like this. Uh, Cursed Enemies Frostbite was not even that bad. You know, pretty much just use items to fix what you need. That's why I say it's probably more budget friendly than what the build can be. Void batteries are cheap. You know, so it's fun to play. I had a lot of fun with this build. I'm going to still probably play for another day or two just to farm up currency before I switch over to most likely I'm thinking Winter Orb is going to be next with like double power charge ring or using a new mirror uh, ring thing. Headhunter, you know, some fun stuff like that. Badge of the Brotherhood, which I'm looking forward to. Probably keep the Void Batteries, but I gotta see the build also. Cause I'm not sure if it's gonna be a, um, the uh, the Gain Frenzy Charge on Hit chest piece or Replica of Feral's Fur. That's how I wanna see the two. But, hope you liked the video. If you like, we'll see you subscribe below, follow on Twitch. If you have questions about this, if you don't like this video, cause it's not really showing end game potential or anything, you know, let me know. It wasn't very questionable if I was going to put this out there or not, but I was going to put it out there just in case someone really wants it or not. You know, if you don't want it, it's, you don't have to follow it. But, overall, like the video. Hope you see everyone on the next one. Thank you.